Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a polynomial function. Uh, specifically, we have the graph of a polynomial function. And what we want to do is find f of 10. Okay, so here is our function. And we want to find f of 10. So some of you out there be like, no problem. Um, you know, I can do this. Just give me the actual function. You know, give me all this, you know, what this is equal to. Then I could plug in 10 to where all the x's are at and figure this out. Well, unfortunately, for this particular problem, this is all the information you're going to get. So, you know, some of you might be saying, well, you know, this is impossible to figure out. You know, if you don't give me the actual function, you know, there's no way I can do this problem. Well, no, this is actually not that difficult. And it's something that you certainly need to be able to understand and do if you're in uh, any sort of algebra class. Okay, so uh, polynomials is a huge topic in mathematics and, and in algebra. Um, of course, I'm certainly not going to try to teach you everything uh, in this one uh, video. We're just going to focus in on the relationship um, of a, the graph of a polynomial and some things that we can determine from it. Okay, some information that we could determine, and we could certainly answer this question. Now, if you think you can do it, I would certainly encourage you to pause the video and you know think about it for a second. That's a good. That's always you know the smart thing to do is say say you know what maybe you don't know what to do, but maybe if you pause the video and thought about it for a second, maybe you could figure it out. All right, but uh, before we get into this particular problem, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus. You can find the link to my math help program in the description of this video. Um, I also do a ton of uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification, ASVAB, I can go on and on and on. I literally have tons of courses here for various types of tests. So of course you can go to my website and check out uh, if you are studying for one of these tests, if I have your exam, I should have it. I also do a lot in homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. Now one, um, thing that I want to mention real quick, and then we're going to get into this problem, is the importance of taking notes. So if you're a math student and your notes are anything less than awesome, you have to improve your notes. This is super critical. Just trust me, I've been teaching math for decades. So look at your notes and improve your notes if they need to be improved. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving your notes, you can use my notes to study from. So I'm going to leave links to all my different uh, math notes in the description of this video. All right, now let's get into this problem. Now let's first talk about a few things about polynomials, the graphs, and just some real basic uh, stuff. Okay, so let me just draw a little x, y uh, plane here. So here's x and here's y. So let's say uh, I have some polynomial like this, okay? Now, a couple of things about the graphs of polynomials. One, they're always gonna be smooth and continuous, and they're gonna have curves, so they do, well, uh, unless you're dealing with the line, but anything beyond that, any higher degree, uh, beyond a linear degree, um, in other words, power of one, you, you're gonna, polynomials will curve. They're never gonna do this kind of thing, okay, or, or this, okay? So when you see something like this, you're likely dealing with a polynomial function. Now, this graph in this particular problem is basically implying that we're looking at the entire graph. In other words, this is gonna continue on infinitely upwards and this is going to go on uh, continuously downward. So I'm giving you basically the entire uh, graph. Now one thing that uh, you can uh, determine when you have the graph of a polynomial function, if I said this is a third degree polynomial, and matter, matter of fact I really should probably stress to you that this is a third degree polynomial and you know I, I could revise this and say this is a third degree polynomial so let's just be very specific about this. A third degree polynomial, this is the graph of uh, a third degree polynomial. All right, now that's important, and the reason why that's important is the following, okay? So uh, if I'm saying this is a third degree polynomial, then a, this polynomial must have three solutions. Anytime the, a, a graph of anything crosses the x-axis, these are what we call solutions. They're also called roots. They're also called zeros. But basically, they're going to be a solution to the polynomial. So this point here is a solution. Okay, so let's say this is negative 5. That is a solution. In other words, x equals negative 5 
is a solution to that polynomial. And right here, this is 1. x equals 1 is also a solution. And if this is, let's say, uh, 4, x equals 4 is also a solution. These happen to be real number solutions, but you absolutely need to understand anytime this graph of a polynomial is chopping through the x-axis, you're looking at real number solutions. Now, the reason why I stress uh, a third degree, uh, this is a third degree polynomial, is, hey, I got my three solutions, right? Here's one, two, three. They're all real number solutions. Now, if I said this is the graph of a fifth degree polynomial, yeah, oh boy, that's a terrible five. How about something like that? Yeah, it's a little bit better. So this is a fifth degree polynomial. You would, and this is the entire graph. Now this thing is going infinitely this way and infinitely this way. So uh, what can we, you know, ascertain? Well, we have three real roots. These are still roots, but where are the other two? Okay, we have three. We're looking for five. Well, then uh, those two are going to be imaginary or complex numbers. So, again, this is a big topic. And if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you might want to check out uh, something like my Algebra 2 course or Pre-Calculus course. I really get heavy-duty into polynomials as uh, they're extremely important in mathematics. Okay, so again, I'm revising my little problem here, my pop quiz. And um, what we're looking at here is a third-degree polynomial. Okay, we want to find f of 10. So how do we do that? All right, so now that we have some uh, you know, basic understanding, Maybe you can actually figure this out now, right? I pretty much kind of gave you a pretty good hint on what to do. If you want to see the problem one more time, there it is. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so if this is a third-degree polynomial, this is the, the graph of a third-degree polynomial, I have my three solutions here, okay? I'm looking at where the polynomial is crossing the x-axis. So I got negative 5, positive 1, and positive 6. So x equals negative 5 is a solution, x equals 1 is a solution, and x equals 6 is a solution. Third degree polynomial, I have all my three solutions. Now, if you think about this, if x equals negative 5, okay, I can write this as we call a linear factor. Okay, I kind of stumbled upon my words there. But uh, I really want to make sure you understand this. So, so x equals negative 5, I can write that as x plus 5 because if I solve, okay, well, just stick with me for a second. We're going to, this is just a linear factor. Okay, so I can think of negative 5 as x plus 5. I'll show you here in a second why that's the case. One, I can think of it as x, the linear factor, x minus 1. And then 6, I can write this as a linear factor, x minus 6. Now, why is that the case? Well, let's take a look at a function. If I Well, actually, let me go back up here and show you this. Let's say I said solve this equation. Okay, I have a polynomial equation, x plus 5 <clears throat> times x minus 1 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, if I said solve this equation, what would you do? Well, you would set each one of these factors equal to zero, right? You would go, all right, x plus five, I'm gonna set that uh, equal to zero, x minus one, I'm gonna set that equal to zero, and x minus six, I'm gonna set that equal to zero and solve. And when you solve these uh, three little equations, you're gonna get x is equal to negative five, x is equal to one, and x is equal to six, all right? So this is how we kind of reverse engineer and build this polynomial function. So if this is the solutions, okay, real number solutions, it, you're going to set up this polynomial function. You're going to set it equal to zero and try to solve it. But I have the factors of this polynomial. So now at this point, you might say, awesome, you know, I can go ahead and actually find the function. And maybe your first inclination is to take all this and, you know, multiply these together. So I'm going to use the FOIL method and then multiply this in and get your entire function. But there's no need to do that, okay? As long as you understand that this, in fact, represents the polynomial function right here of this uh, specific function, because here are my solutions, well, then we can write the polynomial in this manner, okay? Or the function of the polynomial, rather. So... We can call this f of x is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 1 times x minus 6. All right, so what was the question? The question is to find f of 10. All right, but uh, you might be saying, well, don't I need to kind of expand this or you know do all this multiplication here. No, you do not. Okay, we can find f of 10 
right now, okay, I'm applying f of 10 into this function, so I want to replace this x with 10, place that x with 10, and this x with 10, and then I'm going to simplify. 10 plus 5 is 15, 10 minus 1 is 9, 10 minus 6 is 4, do that multiplication, I get 540, so f of 10 is equal to 540. All right, now, if in fact you got this right, I must give you a awesome happy face with a 1983 Mohawk. And I'll give you an A plus for this little pop quiz. So very, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of just pull this together though, conceptually. So what we have here is our polynomial function has its real solutions at negative five, one, and six. Uh, we just you know looked at how we can uh, uh, use these real number solutions to write linear factors to write the function, right? So f of x is equal to, I could just do this quickly here, x plus 5, x minus 1, and x minus 6. You definitely need to know about linear factors, factoring. This is, you know, really important stuff in the area of uh, uh, polynomial functions. But here is 10, okay? So I was trying to find f of 10, and we figured out that f of 10 is 540. So what does that mean? Well, you can see how our graph is turning up this way. So uh, this scale is not perfect, but you know, uh, if this is 10 right here on the x-axis and you go all the way up here, well, that coordinate on that um, graph would be 10, 540. Okay, that's what that means. F of 10 is equal to 540. This is a point that's on that polynomial. So again, this is just kind of scratching the surface in, uh, in terms of polynomials and polynomial equations and functions, things that you need to know. But, you know, we try to take math one little skill at a time. So, uh, again, if, you know, you were confused about this, hopefully this video kind of cleared things up. I should have made this a little bit more, um, you know, uh, specific with a, being a third degree polynomial. But hopefully you're not going to hold that against me. And matter of fact, if this video in some tiny way helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. They're all there for you. So if you like my teaching style, I have tons of content and I'm producing new content all the time. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.